Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. Today, we're looking at discoveries in games that were made many years after a title's release. Easter eggs and hidden details in games are always interesting to find. Secrets are inserted by developers in the hopes that a few people will find them. And sometimes, secrets are just what developers forgot to take out. And even though these secrets are hard to find, many are discovered on a regular basis. However, some secrets can take over a decade to find. With Resident Evil 4, it took 12 years for somebody to discover a small secret after the game's helicopter scene that involves Mike. The first documentation of this easter egg was by YouTube user SR212787 on January 4th, 2017. In Chapter 5, after the helicopter scene, if the player uses the extra attachment scope on the rifle, it's possible to make out a figure in the distance. Taking this further by manipulating the in-game camera reveals this figure to be a 2D cutout of a person wearing a black scarf, green coat, and jeans. It has not been discovered or revealed who this person is, but is speculated to be a developer of the game. Another late discovery comes from one of Resident Evil's rival horror series. Over 18 years after the release of the cult PlayStation title, Silent Hill, a modder named Ruka666 found never-before-seen enemies in the game's data. Ruka666 discovered six unused enemies in the data, and was able to add them back into the game. The six enemies are based on a snake, an ostrich, a monkey, a frog, a butterfly, and a manta ray. Although the creatures have models, textures, and even animations, they don't seem to have any behavior programmed for them, and they move around erratically. Isotage is a speedrunner who's held various records in Donkey Kong 64, including third place for any percent all keys and sixth place in the regular any percent run. As well as this, Isotage has earned another noteworthy achievement, as they stumbled upon a hidden rainbow coin 17 years after the game's release. For the casual player, these hidden collectibles can often be hard to reach. This one, however, is within anyone's grasp, but is just very well hidden. The coin is located in Fungi Forest, just after the Blue Tunnel and by the tag barrel near the mill. The mound that usually indicates where the rainbow coins are buried is obscured by long grass. And since the player must slam on the mound to get the coin, it's understandable why this discovery took so long to happen. Isotage discovered this secret collectible when looking at the save data of the game, and noticed the rainbow coin data was incomplete for that sage. Isotage said to Kotaku, Many runs were invalidated because of this discovery. It's one way to keep the community active. I'm looking forward to seeing speedrunners claim back those records. These little inclusions to a title might not be discovered for a long time, and some even stay in re-releases and remastered versions of a game. A thread on 4chan questioned the validity of an article about a former writer and designer for Bethesda, Michael Kirkbride. The piece was on Michael Kirkbride and how he once didn't show up for work for five days after taking mushrooms and LSD and locking himself in an apartment. An anonymous developer, neither confirming nor denying the story, claimed that this wasn't outside the realms of possibility following his experience working on Bioshock 2. He revealed that lead narrative director Jordan Thomas would drink and take mushrooms in an attempt to help his creativity. This led to him getting quite emotional, calling the whole team together while crying, and stating that he had failed them for whatever reason. As a means of proving their authenticity to the numerous doubting commenters, while also remaining anonymous, the developer revealed an undiscovered easter egg in the original Bioshock. They stated that players should boot up the original Bioshock, then go to the second half of Hephaestus, where the player first encounters Ryan in person. They should then use Incinerate to get themselves down to just one HP, then use it again at the area where the cutscene triggers and walk into it. This should make the player die exactly when the scene starts, but they would end up at a Vita chamber outside the map. Turning on art captions at this point reveals a developer message about Paul Hellquist not doing his job properly. This bug slash easter egg was confirmed to be true, and undiscovered for over a decade. That said, when we tried to recreate the glitch for this video, we found that it did not work in both the original or remastered PC versions of the game. So it's possible Paul Hellquist finally did his job. It appears that the room, or at least one very similar, can still be accessed through other more frustrating means, however.
By stacking objects by a wall in Neptune's bounty using the Telekinesis Plasmid, the player can reach a hidden area containing a Vita Chamber and the very same message. When PC Gamer contacted Ken Levine, writer and creative director of Bioshock, he said that he believes the post was created by Chris Klein, the game's lead programmer, though the message seemed consistent with the humor of the entire dev team. Ken stated, it was never supposed to be visible to end users. Paul just promised that his team would take care of it. Being a skeptical programmer, I wanted to make sure that the QA team could easily identify objects that the design team missed, so I set the default object description to that cheeky message. And now it's time for this episode's random piece of trivia. Today we're talking about the classic party game series, Bomberman. Unfortunately though, we're talking about the critically panned Bomberman Act Zero. In a Japanese Xbox News interview, lead game designer Koichi Takashita stated that the game was originally going to be titled Bomberman Begins, but was changed to the similar meaning, Act Zero. However, the popular comic book movie, Batman Begins, released during Act Zero's development, and the team opted to change the name, presumably for legal issues and to avoid brand confusion. That's all for today, but you might like to know that Digino Gaming is supported by Patreon. If you'd like to help keep the show going like these people up on the screen, be sure to check out the link in the description below the screen, in the description below, in the description of the video. The in, in the, uh, it's in the, 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 the description. It's in there. Congratulations! Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that was a high octane race! Coming in the lead, it's Chad Barnan, Trevor Wooten, Mr. Spectre, Malcavio, the three master gamers, Vitas Varnas, Robert Cox, Hector I. Murillo, ya boy Beowulf, Jedi Starle 7, Arkady Skywalker, Joshua Bach, Karim Chowdhury, Dean Evinger Jr., Super AJS, T. Kazoo. That's it for today, but I hope that you enjoyed yourself. If you did, be sure to give the video a like so that we can see how much you enjoyed it. Uh, if you didn't, then um, sucks to be you, frankly. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and you want to see more videos. If you do want to see more videos, click the bell. This dialogue is always the same at the end. You sort of know how it goes nowadays, I'm pretty sure. 